Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Polyhedron Cladocast episode 94. I'm Steve Tudor. I'm Andy Lewis. And I'm Sid Gill. And today we are going to be talking about all the games we're excited to play in the next 12 months. Because, God damn it, we're going to have some positivity in this world. If you say so, mate. <laughs> is, that come, is that come in a box as well? Can we buy that? Hopefully, bottle it or something. I'm fresh out, I really am. I've had enough already. It's only Monday and I've had enough of this week already. Dear, that bad, is it? It is that bad, yes. I won't go into details. That could be considered unprofessional. <laughs> Although, I do have something to look forward to this week. And that is, I am getting a new mat. Uh, no, well, it's not coming tomorrow, but I'm looking for... I'm getting a new mattress. Yay. I've got a specific message, actually, this week, saying I hope you're not going to talk about mattresses again on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Unlucky. Did you go to Dreams and try out the uh, the fancy thing that Steve wanted I tried? didn't, no. I didn't go in loaded with weights and sort of park myself on the soft bed, no. I just kind of went online. I, I sort of Googled best mattress 2020, and I got an answer and went, yep, that one. And it will turn up on the 12th of February. There we go. Hmm. And it's about 26 foot thick. It's insane. <laughs> There we go, folks. Live updates of uh, mm. Andy's mattress purchasing. Yep. Ah, all fresh, ready for a new arse dent. <laughs> oh, well, let's talk about what else you're excited to get this year, then, Andy. Oh, OK. I mean, by that, I assume you mean some board games. I do indeed. Some board games and some RPGs, hopefully. Hopefully. I mean, not that we might get to play them or anything, but you at well, least will receive them. Yeah. Well, we might we might not even get that with some of them, you know, what with the uh, shipping container troubles and all that. That is and very Brexit true. Brexit and VAT updates. And... Hmm. It was telling me the other day that apparently the shipping rate to the UK from, I think it's from the EU actually, is now four times what it used to be. No, it's from America. It's from America. Four times. I know Frank from City of Games was saying that about the um, his next Kickstarter pricing it up is, is proving difficult. Hmm. Because the cost of shipping containers, and it's not just, it's this isn't the kind of Brexit, this is actually there's a shortage of shipping containers at the moment. Yes, that's it. So there's actually more demand for them? Well, yes, yeah, because they keep dropping the f***ing things in the ocean. Have you seen their attrition rate <laughs> off one of those container ships? Oh, it's all right if we lose half a dozen, that's nothing. It's rounding up. Hang on a minute, I mean, those ISO containers, what are they, 40 foot long and 10 foot high? They are big. Have a look into it, they fall off the ships all the time. I mean, they were, oh, I remember, the, remember the ones that f- washed up on Devon or wherever it was and people were nicking yeah. brand new BMW motorbikes out the back of them? Yep, remember them. There's probably value in chartering a boat and just hawking them off the, the sea floor, just opening them up and finding out what's in there and just trawling it and stealing the stuff off the bottom. Sorry, reclaiming the stuff off the bottom. It's legitimate salvage, mate. If the Rossi exactly. can be considered legitimate salvage, then, you know. <laughs> exactly. You knew if you do it, you'd end up with, like, you know, finding the containers that are full of the cheap crap that gets sold in B&M. <laughs> <laughs> Out of date Terry's chocolate oranges and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. That's and it. The, the, those, like, fake stone Buddha statues to put in your garden. Probably. <laughs> Or you could, you could hit the jackpot and get, like, an entire ISO container of something like Twinkies, because they never go off. <laughs> <laughs> They'll still be there in a million years. Well, you know, humanity's and all of life has, has, has long since departed this earth, and these Twinkies will be sat there, either in their un, un, unchanged state, or they'll have evolved to a life form of their own, <laughs> and you get these ridiculous sort of cream-filled sea slugs. <laughs> a Twinkie overlords. <laughs> You guys ever had a Twinkie? Because you can't really, you can rarely buy them over here. So, uh, I've had one, yeah, I've had mm. one, and had one. it was one of the most things in my life. I might as well just go and eat the bag of Tate and Lyle with a spoon. It was, there was nothing. Else. It was like it was like sugar yeah, with texture, nice. as far as I could tell. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they're not exciting. I mean, you see them in like Die Hard, and you know, when when what's his chops and um, buys them in the shop, he's like you know fifteen of them. And uh, you used to think, yeah, I need to find, I need to have a Twinkie and find out what it's like. Then just there's nothing to them. It's just air and sugar and a bit of butter. Oh, that's that's probably not butter, it's probably palm oil. I, yeah. I think butter's being too generous some kind of as well. vegetable oil derivative. Yeah. It will be, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hydrated vegetable fats or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> and it won't even be sugar because it's American. It'll be um, corn syrup, it'll be the, the HF, HF uh, corn syrup, won't it? 
Oh, God, we're really not selling this, are we? Mm, tasty. Mm. Right then, let's quickly sideswipe all this then. Let's <laughs> talk about some games then. <laughs> we're here for bloody ever, boys. So, what we usually do is we're going to use our format. I was going to pick a few each, but I think it's also worth mentioning a couple of what we call or honourable mentions, which are basically games we banged on about enough before that everyone really knows about. That it, it seems weird to devote like uh, five or ten minutes to talking about a game where I think we've already bent everyone's ears over. Like, for instance, I've mentioned Oathsworn Into the Deepwood on basically every other podcast, I think. Yes. Which is this big adventure-style game with a a choose-your-own-adventure path ran by a phone app, followed by a big mini-boss fight that's supposed to be something akin to a raid from a a World of Warcraft combined with Kingdom Death Monster. and It just looks glorious. It does. Um, Are you going to get the... um massive rats that were on display at uh, the expo when we saw it yes oh very nice i thought they were like demonstration models and they're just to, to, to tease you but no 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 um so what they did with that was really clever is that was the game where they did uh two pledge levels you could either get standees or the miniatures mm. so the monsters were going to be miniatures but your here no you're sorry your heroes will be miniatures but the monsters were going to be standees to cut down on costs and which is really interesting because it shows you just what the market is for standees versus miniatures. Well, I went for standees, then got a bonus and spent my bonus on the miniatures and the pledge manager. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. There is some Lewis within you after all. <laughs> and on a similar note, I feel I don't need to mention Perseverance Castaway Chronicles anymore because I think I've also mentioned that in every other episode, yes. which is the crazy David um, Tertsey game about... A cruise ship trapped on an island full of dinosaurs in which you're going to train the dinosaurs to rebuild civilization. As you do. As you do. Hmm. Yes, yeah, we have milked that particular cow quite mm. hard. But yes, I think we've both backed that. So Yes. It'll be interesting to see what happens. And that's the sort of the two parter, isn't it? Or rather it's the two part Kickstarter with four parts of a game. Yeah, that's the one, yeah. Yes. And then they're all interlinked. But it'll be interesting to see how that pans out. It will. Yes, but it is very pretty, and it's a big Davy T game, so obviously we're probably going to like it. And it's probably going to be brutally hard and very aggressive. Yeah, and after getting um, my Infinity Box for um, Anachrony over Christmas, it's going to be beautiful when it comes. Oh, yes, it is. Yes, I got I got a similar box, in fact, over Christmas. The thing is, I got mine full of stuff, whereas yours, I guess, wasn't quite as full because you already had Anachrony and I didn't. Yes, so basically I spent like an hour taking everything out of the old box Mm. and putting it back into the new box. It took me four hours, four hours to sort through the entire Infinity box, an entire afternoon to punch it all and sort it all out and put it into the box. It was ridiculous, but it was glorious, and I still haven't played it. (laughs) And another one that we've, well, I say we've milked the cow, I think the entire industry has milked the cow on this one, is obviously Frosthaven, so the sequel to Gloomhaven. Um, I think, was it the certainly the single largest board game Kickstarter to date, I think, and something like the fourth largest Kickstarter campaign of all time, of across all the genres, something like that. It was an insane amount. It was about $13 million or something like that. So, yes, we're all obviously looking forward to that. Steve decided not to back it because he's got Gloomhaven and hasn't played it. I also have Gloomhaven yep. and haven't played it, but that didn't stop me backing Frosthaven, so. See, I thought I'd more likely spend my money on um, Jaws of the Lion. That kind of intrigued me a bit more. It does, yes. Yes, I'd, I'd, I'd quite like to get that as well. But are we ever going to play that either? No. No. <laughs> no. No, no, we're not. No. And the stupid thing is, even though we're sat here, we play, we could play board games online. We don't really do that much because none of us have got any time. And we could play Gloomhaven online in the app, which is really, really pretty. And we still haven't done that. Which is rubbish. Um, and another one that we actually we both have backed hilariously um so this is the flagship for the game found um crowdfunding platform that's run by awaken realms which is iss vanguard which is kind of in the same vein as their previous two games um tainted grail and the recent Etherfields. so again a kind of a story based lots and lots of cards 
branching storyline, very beautiful miniatures, etc., etc. Uh, typical Awaken Realm stuff. So that was very, very popular. I don't think quite as popular as their last two games, but that's probably more indicative of the fact that it's on a new platform, I think, than anything else. Yeah, um, I think it's going to take a bit of a while to get yeah. that momentum up what that was on Kickstarter. Yeah. yeah, I've even seen a few people saying, oh, I'm not backing that because it's not on Kickstarter. Which seems a bit silly. Yeah, seems a bit daft. But Awaken Realms have got a pretty good track record, so I don't think there's any reason to to suspect that this won't work. Mm. Um, there's probably going to be teething. Tr- well, actually, will there be teething trolls? Because GameFound is what they use anyway as their pledge manager, so it's probably going to be smoother than previously yeah. because they're not using two platforms; they're just using one, and they've, they've got the track record now of at least four games that have used it. So, I have high hopes. Same here. So we shall see. That's due apparently this year, although. I'm not holding my breath. <laughs> no, I'm not really expecting it this year either. No, that's going to be at least a 12-month turnaround. Mm. So those are the things that kind of like are the obvious choices. Yes. So Andy, surprise me, delight me, excite me with something new and interesting. Ooh. Uh, Ooh. I might leave the room Ooh. and let Ooh. you be alone if that's what he's <laughs> going to be doing to you. Exactly, you know, with the ambition and the offer. Well, this is quite a long list I've got to choose from here. Unsurprising. And it is a difficult decision because all of these, bar one, are on Kickstarter, are basically from some former Kickstarter campaigns. Um, but the big one, which is a fairly, probably an obvious choice, is Dawn of Madness, which is a prequel to Deep Madness, which I was very, very, very pleased with and still am uh, from a few years ago from Dimension Games. Dawn of Madness, I say, is the prequel, I think, to uh, Deep Madness, uh, but it is in the same vein. So lots and lots of sort of mutated horror, kind of love. It's in, inspired, in inverted commas, by Lovecraft. So it's got lots of weird and wonderful beasties, um, gribblies running around. It's probably going to be brutally hard. It's very, very story based and looks very, 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 very delightful. So I'm really looking forward to that. But it's been about two years since I backed it, so I can't remember that much about it anymore, other than that looks damn good and <laughs> wasn't cheap because it is obviously just jam-packed with minis like Kern Deep Madness was. So it's mm. miniature-tastic, but, you know, typical dungeon crawler. But I think there's a lot more story-based. There's a lot of much more story focus on this one than, than, than Deep Madness. I've got a feeling, actually, there might even be an app, but I can't remember. Hmm. Okay, I, I didn't. I, I got to admit, I remember you talking about it a while ago when you backed it, but I don't remember anything about it since. Tell you what, man looks up thing on internet. There we go. Let's do that. Let's do some actual research. Um, blah, 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 blah. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Unlike any other board game in two distinctive ways. First, it is a true horror experience that actively tries to creep you out through its character focused story driven chapters, chapters. But second, because it is a game that is actively shaped by its community. Isn't that pretty much every Kickstarter game now when they throw out a vote? Who wants this? And who wants this? Well, you did that, so you've driven it. Hmm. That seems a bit token, but never mind. But you do get a lot for your money. An awful lot for your money. Okay. So I am very much looking forward to this. Obviously, custom dice, millions of cards, lots of gribblies, very, very beautiful models, um, you know, because I haven't got enough to paint already. Very, very much looking forward to that. It almost looks a little bit like Labyrinth, the film. You know, with all the sort of the monsters coming out of the walls and things like that. There's a few of those. I've just looked at the images of this. I don't know what version of Labyrinth you watch. <laughs> That's the one where I was stoned off my tits. Because <laughs> they don't look like something from Labyrinth. Last last time I heard the little worm that invites her, you know, the girl in for a cup of tea it didn't look like something from Lovecraft Come inside. Nightmares. Have a nice cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, well, I mean the fireys were quite weird. The ones, were the the, the oh, worst the bit of the film. The That's the yeah. one. They're a bit strange. And mm. there's all the things coming out the walls and stuff. But yeah, no, this is very much horror. You've got to wonder actually who designs these things and what is wrong with them. Says <laughs> the man who who works for ISO nine thousand one audits, mate. What the <laughs> is wrong with you lot? Who cares? No one. No one. <laughs> That's the problem. No one does. But oh, they should. Seriously, sexy-looking little monster things definitely does not remind me of Labyrinth, mate. Well, it's only because there's a few of them sort of stuck to walls. So you got the, all those face monsters. It's a like, oh, bark, oh, so your basis can. is entirely on the one percent that stick to a wall, and that is your entire basis of saying that this yes. looks like Labyrinth. Absolutely, the fact that yes. There's disembowelments yes. and massive claws and ugly monster faces and all the rest of it, which has nothing to do with Labyrinth. We're glossing mm. over that, right? Okay, fine. <laughs> 
It's, it's pretty much how I did my PhD. You know, 1%, that'll do. That counts as research. That's fine. What about all this? Right, Tudor, what have you got for us? I'm going to pick something new, exciting and fresh, then. I ain't gonna pick, I'm going to pick something unexpected. Are you? You may have heard of the designer Cory Knitzke. I've just pronounced that hobby wrong. Exactly. Um, he was with Fantasy Flight Games and worked on basically every single big day game they did for about a five-year span. Oh, I think he's done some Mansions of Madness stuff. I yes, think. His, name, his, his name's on the Mansions of Madness, his there name's on all kinds of the Arkham Horrors and things mm. like that. But he left Fantasy Flight and he made his own company called Unexpected Games. And they've announced their first title and it's called The Blank Initiative. Everyone's caught caught in the initiative, but basically the cover artwork has something redacted out. So it's the redacted initiative. Okay, interesting. And interesting sums this up because I can't quite get my head around this game. Now, at first, it feels like it's going to be like David Turtsy's redacted. But at the same time, it's going to be some kind of storybook and some kind of puzzle. Ooh. Basically says there's three elements to the game. A story, a game, and a mystery. The story is told via a comic that comes with the game. Then you've got a cooperative game, which is about strategy, code breaking, and storytelling, it says. Hmm. And then um, there is a mystery element to it, and not much has really been released so far about how the game actually works. But you've got a map of like a house, you've got spies that move around the house, as I say, it looks like redacted oh. um but there's a little code breaking panel which goes in with cards that slot in by the looks of it that you can flip things to unveil the code so it's a bit like decrypted in that sense it seems like it's decrypted with an actual board game built around it as well hmm. do you know that's what this description reminds me of quite a lot android lots and lots of little game elements thrown at the wall let's see which ones stick i i'm hoping it's gonna be a little bit more advanced than that a little bit more nuanced than Android, because Android really is just a tumble dryer full of game design. It elements, really is, isn't it? yes, right. Let's have a murder mystery. Let's have a bit of espionage. Let's have, a, let's have I know, a pipe lo- a pipe dream element for it, because why the f*** not? Yeah. And uh, little bits of uh, essentially what is Arkham Horror, because you're just travelling around a board trying to do things. That said, I do like Android. <laughs> so, yeah, it really looks like a cross between a story-driven game and, like, a puzzle book, you know, like the Journal 29 kind of puzzle book kind of thing, all combined into an actual board game. Oh. So I'm really intrigued by this. Interesting. Uh, speaking of which, have you two tried Journal 29 yet? No. I got it for Christmas. Uh, have you started it? I've done about three pages, and that's about it. Yeah, okay. Hmm. Yeah, Laura and I are making our way through it. We're about a third of the way through now, roughly. Sid, would you like to pick a game? Yes, I can talk about a game, and it's going to be, wait for it, just a second, it's going to be an RPG. Wow, I've got to lie down, I'm that shocked. You got, I'm glad you're all sat down for that. Right, so, <laughs> I'm going to pick the one that has really caught my attention this week, and I'm so excited about it. I am buzzing, like I am a little child, and that is... Twilight 2000 by Free League. So, what's all this about? I came late to the party on this. Nobody told me about this. Steve, I'm looking at you. I had to fall over this on my own, right? (laughs) You had to do some research yourself. (laughs) Bloody hell. I actually had to go and find this myself, right? But the guys that brought us Alien, brought us Forbidden Lands, all the good guys at Free League are involved in this. And they're remaking the original game so this would be the fourth edition of it, I think, that somebody that they've that they've come out with. So it's based. It, I think mm. from what I can understand, it's, I I missed it originally, but it was brought out in the eighties, mid eighties, just after or during the Cold War, I guess. So it's a uh, um, survival, apocalyptic, post-apocalyptic sort of rewriting of history affair, and um, it's got. It's got a lot of little exciting elements in it. So, yeah, I, I backed the Kickstarter for this. And the basic premise is kind of like World War Three's happened. And my understanding that the basic scenario is that World War Three has happened and yep. you're, you're a squad of soldiers trapped somewhere 
around Poland, Russia kind of thing, and then you've basically got to yeah, find Yeah, so it's all way based in back. Poland. Or, well, the original game's all based in Poland, but Free League have done the classic thing that they've done with mm. Tales from the Loop and all the other games that they've brought out, and they've given you a Swedish setting. And they've added lots of other yeah. settings as part of the uh, Kickstarter as bonus material. So uh, uh, there's, there's other parts of the world mm. you can play in. But you're right. Largely, it's about the the squad of soldiers. You're trapped. You're kind of you're like there, and it all goes wrong. The whole world's gone. You're kind of left to yourself. So it drag and and you're thinking, oh, it's just going to be about soldiers and guns. But no, they've brought in sort of all the survivors. So you just random people walking around. You know, the milkman that's lost his milk float, sort of thing. Drag him in into the action, and um, some CIA spies. Lots of other little bits and pieces like that. But I think the thing that's really got me excited is it's going to be brutal. It is going to be absolutely killer, I reckon. There's not going to be anything fancy. There's no laser beams or plasma rifles or magic weapons. It is going to be simple, basic stuff. It's going to be a bit like Fallout. Fallout smashing into Forbidden Lands in a way. Um, Just because it's going to be... It's just going to have everything I want in it. And and I've I've just... Everything I read about Mm. it... So I kind of went, uh, so I found out about this on Saturday or Sunday. I was reading about it, whenever it was. By the end of the day, I'd bought it all in. I'm balls deep on this one. So it's, <laughs> it's it is, um, so it, as I say, the Kickstarter's closed on it now, but it, it's coming in April, I think. No, June, June. I, June, June is estimated. I think they're on track. Yeah, the they alpha rules are already yeah. out. So I, I've got I've got access to the alpha, but I I I've held off from that mainly because I've got plenty of games to play as it is, um, and I was going to wait for the finished package. I kind of I want the thing that's all been playtested, yeah, ready, see, and done. I may not be able to hold back. So because I backed late, I don't have access to it on Kickstarter. So I've had to email Free League and ask them, "Can I have a PDF, please, sir?" <laughs> but we, <laughs> I'm sure it'll sort itself out. But no, I mean, just honestly, I think everything about it is is it's got me really buzzing. Um, and and. Just because of the way we're playing, you know, obviously Alien being our game of last year. And it's got, you know, it's got the main guy that wrote the rules and, and set a lot of the scene for that. Um, you got, you know, the the guy that did a lot of the art for Forbidden Lands in it. I mean, just the artwork looks really sexy as well, from what I've seen of it. Um, mm. And I, I know they're going for a very grounded approach as well. I think they've been doing quite a bit of research into kind of what military tech's available. So it's not, as you said, it's not laser guns. It's you know, genuine real world world re- yeah, weapon. Which I think is going to make it interesting because it's going to be a little bit different to you know a lot of the other stuff we've played. It's going to be it's going to be weird. We're playing a role play game, which mm. you know, twenty years ago when this game or forty years ago when this game came out was a reality. People were were sat there thinking about you know. The Reds were coming back mm. then. All right, you know, it's a bit different now, but yeah, well, is it different? Maybe not. Let's not stray into that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what this actually reminds me a little bit of? This War of mm. Mine. Yeah. Yes, I was thinking the exact same thing, actually, yeah. Because mm. yeah. obviously that's, you know, you are, you know, I mean, obviously very different in this prism. You're just sort of wandering around, whereas in this War of Mine, you've kind of trying to defend the house. You've called bagsies on. Um, I'm trying to put, you know, seal up the roof and make sure nobody steals your, your potatoes. I'm sure you could actually run it the Twilight yeah. 2000. I think, I think the concept here, though, yes, there is, yes, yes. there are the concept of trying to get out. You know, you, you can either do what you've just described and just hold, hunker down and build your bunker and reprocreate the world in 50 years or whatever you want. Um, but I think fun, you know, mm-hmm. one of the one of the core sort of themes in it is to get out, is to get back out into safety somehow, somewhere. So there is going to be, I think it's going to be a bit like, I was thinking about this today, I wonder if it's going to be a bit like Forbidden Lands where the ending's written and then it's, you get there, how are you going to get there sort of a thing. Um, so yeah. you might have a few like little adventures or you stumble over a farmhouse and you know you can spend a little adventure type site there or whatever you're going to do. And But there is going to be a lot of the survival element. So if you don't like that from Forbidden Lands, then stay the fuck away from this, but... <laughs> yeah, but otherwise, um, I I think it's yes. I think it's going to be absolutely awesome. I, I really do, and and I'm hope I'm not disappointed by it. I really don't. I think it should be. I mean, the the free league have shown that they can make a really yeah. quality product. So, uh, yeah, yeah. 
I, I, it's I just going to be a shame that because I've, I've gone all in, I'm going to get my lovely engraved dice to go with it and we're not going to play in person. So I'm never going to get to throw my beautifully engraved dice across the table. <laughs> you know, never mind. <laughs> yeah, you might do one day. Yeah, well, you never yeah, know. True. One day. Sandy, give us another game. Oh, good Lord. It's come back round to me already. I was hoping yeah. I could get away with, with a little bit more thought. Well, fortunately, I've already thought of one. Um, I'm going to go pretty much the other way now from boatloads of miniatures and lots and tons of theme to dry, boring Euro. <laughs> Except it won't be your, it won't be dry and boring at all because it's by the same people, the same designer, actually, um, Attila Skogorski. Uh, who did Ave Roma and prehistory? So nice and light and not brain burny at all. <laughs> God, <laughs> Steve looks exhausted just by thinking about it. <laughs> and this is a game called Impression, which is all about printing presses, another very exciting subject, in the 1400s. So printing took off then. So, the, I mean, it, it's just a theme, isn't it? Let's be honest. There's an excuse for moving things around a board to do actions, to get resources, to do other actions. And most prestige wins. But it does look lovely. And I have been really, really impressed with A-games. I have to admit, they're a Hungarian outfit. But Ave Roma was brilliant. Prehistory was particularly good, but it broke me twice when I tried to learn it both times uh, and for that reason I'm all over this because I'm sure it'll do exactly the same thing but because they only use European publishers and printings and, and, and things like that it doesn't go so all the way to China to come all the way back again they can kind of deliver it you know at six months rather than the sort of standard sort of nine to twelve that you get through in a normal Kickstarter um, so I'm quite impressed the quality is really usually really really good and you get tons for your money in the Kickstarter. So for less than 60 euros, you get massive amounts of stuff, loads of expansions and bits and bobs, and particularly nice pretty meeples, which is what everybody wants in their nice, dry, boring euros. <laughs> oh, shit, sorry, Matt, I fell asleep there. Did he, was, he, was he saying something, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> There's words for people like you, Sid. Old. <laughs> Wanker. That's the one I was thinking of. <laughs> but yes, it's it it'll be a nice it's it's a nice a, a strategy board game about printing with unique mechanisms. That's about printing with unique mechanisms, not about printing with unique mechanisms. Well, like That's very different. And aubergines and stuff like that, like you did at school. They're yeah, the sort of stuff you did at primary school. You know, you cut a triangle <laughs> out of a potato and smack it onto your mate's head. That thing, yeah. I've no idea what you're <laughs> talking about now. Neither do we think. <laughs> <laughs> but it's by a guy called Attila, and who doesn't love a guy called Attila? What a great name. I mean, as if you don't need another reason to buy a game. So yes, it's another complicated Euro, of, and we all know that I love complicated Euros, so why not? Fair enough. Mm. That was Impression by, by A-Games, games, yes. And the Kickstarter's already been for that, Oh, been and gone, yes, yes, yes. A long, long time ago. I don't even remember that one coming launching. No, Completely no, this is a, no. The, the day game stuff usually sort of scoots under the radar because they're not mm. they're not a massive outfit. But uh, say so I've, I've I've backed the, the the previous two, and I've been quite impressed by them. So I'm a sort of one of these sort of small but loyal followers. So one of the games I'm really looking to get my uh, hands on is Northgard Uncharted Lands. Now Northgard is a PC game. Which is available on Steam, and it's kind of a kind of an RTS, kind of a builder game, but quite simple and a little bit cartoony in its graphics. Which are basically a Viking tribe, basically claiming over the land and building things. It's it's one of those resource management games where you know you have to build huts, to build wood choppers, to build boats, to build knights and that kind of thing. This sounds remarkably like a drawing no, in your this, Steve. This sounds like yeah, but Look at it. It's got primary colours in it, Andy. <laughs> primary colours. Yeah, but I can't see primary colours. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> no, this is... Um, so, yeah, it, it's, it is that kind of thing. It, you, you're right. It does follow the idea of, like... what many dry brewing euros follow, but it's a lot more colourful. Mm. Um, it's got dice, because you're going to be attacking people. Oh well, in that case, because you will be you will be amassing your Vikings, go attack your neighbours, and um, like creatures that are on the board, and you'll be exploring and building the board out as you go. Now, I really love the the video game. I put a surprising amount of hours into it. Um, 
and they seem to have just distilled it quite nicely. It's, it's not the most... Although it's deep, it's not the most complex of games, mm. so you could see how it would transfer quite nicely into a video game. I'd like to say Civilization, where you've got all like spreadsheets, so you're going to try and you know boil down into mechanisms mm. in a board game. This moves that a little bit simpler. And of course, it's got some miniatures, it's got loads of colourful dice, it's got those little colourful discs that go on the bottom of your miniatures, you know, who's is who's, that kind of thing. Um, so far, it's looking really pretty and it's looking really interesting. So it does have some does look impressive. It looks a little bit like Isle of Sky in a way. I know, it's just the graph, the art style, though, isn't it? it uh, no, 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 no. Just the, the the fact that you've got um, different terrain on the map and different paths and stuff, and you can put things onto the board and claim them. But obviously, Isle of Sky is a lot simpler by the looks of things. It doesn't have dice or mm. anything like that. So very different game. It just looks reminiscent of it. I should be interested to play that. That sounds fun. Mm. But I won't be able to see it because <laughs> it has reds and greens and they're all the same to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, another RPG from me, Steve, Andy. Surprise, surprise. But no, June. June, the RPG from Medifius. That's, that's what I'm quite looking forward to. And that's coming out in April this year. Um, I think the pre-orders have already are are in you can yep. have your alpha or beta release or whatever on earth it is now uh pdf early look for those that have pre-ordered and we've actually played this we've had a bit of a go i think all three of us have had a go on this we one, have. We? it was it was so what it, what what is it basically it's june as an rpg there's not really a whole lot i can I can say more about that. I could throw in the Spice Must Flow. <laughs> there's Bremen. There's everything everyone loves about June in there. Um, and it's it's a bit different, I suppose. It's a bit more the mystery, more the political intrigue, less combat-y than your typical RPG, I guess. It uses the 2D20 system. So it's nice and easy, quick to pick up. Plays really well. Um, I think the the beta we played... Had a few corners, maybe that needed just rounded off, you know, a bit of a fillet put on them. But, um, but you know, that's all right. That's what that's the point. You know, they wanted <laughs> feedback and, and, and comments, but you know, there's some really nice little mechanics in there. Um, like the uh, it gives you sort of a belief system, so it encourages you to not always play your strongest stat, which I think was a nice little uh, little touch in there, but um, yeah. Other than that, it, it's just it's really good fun. Nice not to be going into every situation and thinking how big a sword or how pointy a spear do I need to solve this little negotiation. It was it was a really interesting system, wasn't it? Because what it did is it really concentrated on the kind of social interaction side of it, but yeah. more the kind of intriguey social side of it. So it basically. I mean, I I haven't seen what mm. what rules got moved over. So what I said, what we played was beta. So there's obviously some tweaks needed, but I did like the way that it did conflict, but it treated social conflict as a conflict. So like rounds were extended. So rather than a round in D and D or a normal RPG is like, oh, I fire my gun or I swing my sword. This like round would be right. Well, I'm going to try and go speak to the spice traders and try and make a ne- you know negotiate with them. Oh, you know, that kind of thing. And it was really interesting what they did. But as you said, what I really liked was that aspect you said about you you pick mm. your stats based on the situation, not what stats best. And trying to pick the stat which wasn't the best can actually help you sometimes. And um, and picking the best stat can screw you up sometimes. It was really interesting. It, it was really different. I think it was quite mm. refreshing as mm. a concept. And as you say, I've not seen the final version, but I'm hoping if knock the corners off rather than taking that out or changing that completely because I think mm. it, it was a, it was nice to see that in a game and it worked well for this setting you know the the political kind of um machinations of of the the world and the um the kind of setting it would didn't really suit all out shooting people it, it would yeah. never have worked as a combat based system I think um it's the right system and it and it played really well and, and as you say that beliefs uh, was it beliefs and tra- talents or something? I can't remember exactly what it was called, but it was it was a nice it was a nice way to make social interactions interesting. 
And it was baked into the character as well, and the, the personality of your character, yeah. which I found really interesting. It wasn't like, here's some stats which tell you what you're like, and then here's some lists that tell you what you're supposed to act like. It was like the two of them were meshed together. So the two were you know, perfectly in sync. It was it was nice. I mean, I I th- I think it would it would have been a much harder game to play had we not all played June and st- or not played seen June played June watched the three part series all that kind of stuff. It needed all that background, I think, and mm. it was quite fun to see some of that come to life and you know in our own little world, you know, the old uh, the Arrakis and the spice and the water, you know, and, and everything else like that. It was. I really enjoyed it, and you know, I think one of the one of our guys in our group is looking forward to running that as a game, hopefully in the next when it comes out. So that'll be a really good, fun one, I think, to play again, having mm. it, you know, to see it outside of beta now, see how mm. it plays as a final game. Well, to hint on something you said earlier, Sid, I have pre-ordered it, Ooh. and I have pre-ordered the bundle which comes with the dice and the character pack, which means I'll be getting some nice dice that I can't use. <laughs> Of course you have. I think we're. I think we should just bin roll twenty and just start rolling Ooh. dice. We just need an extra webcam each, <laughs> pointed at a dice tray, and let's just start tossing dice again, just to make mm-hmm. it feel like the olden days. Okay, my third choice. I'm going to stun you, rigid, and it is not another dry, boring euro. That is why I'm going to stun you, rigid. This is going to be an RPG. Oh, fool off! You're making it up. No, it's true. There's two on my list, actually. Two! Two RPGs on my list. I can only have one, but I'm going to talk about both. Um, <laughs> one of them is the Root RPG, which I won't go into huge amounts of detail on. And we've already talked about Root the board game. Massively asymmetric game that is impossible to teach anybody because you need to teach them about 15 different sets of rules. But you get to play in that little universe, so you can play as a vagabond or as a, as the as the, the, the cat or the... Um, the, bo- the boids or whatever. But the RPG I'm more interested in, not that I'm not interested in Root, is the Aliens RPG Colonial Marines expansion. Ooh. Hell yeah. Yeah, okay. I'll let you off for that then. There you go, you see. <laughs> smiles all round. <laughs> Let's be honest. I mean, it's obvious. It, it's our game of the year, if you didn't l- listen last week, month, whenever it was. But uh, this new expansion is just going to be even bigger and even better. So definitely looking forward to that. So we get to be even more marine even more, well, more like Hudson, hopefully. Cruise around the galaxy, being all badass, and then encountering a xenomorph, and then realise it's all just cotton Y fronts underneath. So it's going to be great. More alien can't be a bad thing. Well, unless you encounter one, then it's a very bad thing, and you've got to run away. This yeah, this one I'm I'm looking forward to as well. It's gonna because it's gonna bring the campaigns into Alien. It's really gonna yes. it's gonna turn it all up in its head because we've played cinematic load, haven't we? That's all we've really played of the uh, Alien RPG. Yeah, because you've played three and I've played two, so you've played the last day of hope or whatever it was called. Hope's last um, day, yeah. Charge of the, the gods one, yes. and uh, destroyer of worlds. Worlds, yeah. So I've not played Hope's last day, but uh, yeah, definitely. So yeah, a campaign in Alien would be. I reckon probably quite a short campaign, if I'm honest, but uh, <laughs> at least for individual characters. <laughs> here's here's the thing, though. They've 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 thought about that. They've got you covered. Have they? They have, because the campaigns mean that you're playing different kind of baddies. You're not playing things that are insta killing you all the time. Yes, you're going to die. Yes, you're probably going to lose some of your party, but it's not going to be you know. <laughs> and all limbs. After the first hour, you're suddenly going to just be smashed into pulp on the bulkhead or anything like that like davis was yeah like <laughs> r.i.p davis oh, gunny enter the cockpit get eaten by a gribbly yes but yeah it's it's, it's going to be interesting i think it really is yeah be i'm really one. looking forward to it is it safe to say that all three of us have already pre-ordered this i see i haven't yet pre-ordered it <gasps> you're letting the side down there mr gill you know why I, get I, on I tell it. you why chop chop i'll tell you why i haven't and and free league's website is a Right bastard for this, right? Every time I go to there, it's in my basket, ready for checkout. And you know mm-hmm. the problem, the reason I haven't? It's because I've got Destroyer Worlds in there. It's because I've got the starter set in there. And the number mm-hmm. at the bottom of the page is <laughs> huge. Right? And, I, and that is the only reason I haven't punched go on it. Because I keep wanting to do it. And I keep thinking, 
I really shouldn't be spending that much, especially not. But in that's January. in Swedish kroner. You can divide no, it by no, eleven, conver- and it's safe. I've converted it to pounds. It's still a big <laughs> number. <laughs> So ah, that's like the order I put smaller, in. For... But it's still a big. Let's see. The problem is right. Is I I I can't. I, I I'm I'm going to have it. I'm going to get it. It's not a matter of if. It's a matter of when. So just do it. Yeah, I know. I'm in trouble already, mate. <laughs> see, it's not as bad as as the basket I had that contained all of Tales from the Loop, all of um, the alien stuff, and all of forbidden. Well, most but... of forbidden lands. That was a big number. Sue doesn't yet know about the Twilight 2000 order <laughs> that went in. That's a she small doesn't number yet in know comparison. about the various bundles of holding that I snapped up as well because they're all <laughs> PDFs, right? So there's a little bit of there's a bit of a reckoning. There's going to be a reckoning, and I don't. I suppose actually, you know, actually, you make a good point. I might as well get in trouble properly rather than spread it out. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You don't get into little yeah, bits of trouble. Point, just get into actually. one big bit of trouble. All is forgiven, and you can move on with yeah, your life. Yeah, once you've been caught smoking, you might as well get caught for drinking and all the rest of it at the same exactly. time. Exactly. Well, you know, go big or go home. Melds into one. But anyway, sorry. There's a long distraction about. No, I have not yet pre-ordered it, but I will be. Yes, yes, you will. Well, I'll have to because we're going to have to play it. You know, it's not mm-hmm. like we're going to sit back and not play it, are we? So I'm going to have to. Buy Precisely. It. You're going to need a rule book, otherwise you can't play. Exactly. I'll, I'll, so, I'll be at so me get own. on it. Jump to it, Marine. <laughs> Shall I stop my grinning? <laughs> <laughs> yes, drop your linen. Do you, uh, you really don't get want me li- to drop my linen right now, mate? No, not after you've spent a week on trials. No, <laughs> good grief. No, I've I've been on trials. It's not for that for that long. It's it's never nice at the end of it. Ooh. Although in the ba- in the background, I have also now jumped onto the uh, the pledge manager for uh, Twilight 2000, and I might have stuck my big toe in the water there <laughs> as well. <laughs> you bastards. Yeah, eventually you'll rub off at me at some point as well. You know, it's all going to come back and get paid for. It looks exciting, it though, doesn't it? It does look interesting. It does look very, very interesting. So, yes, I'm on, on board with that. I think it's, it's fair to safe to say that all, well, well, we're obviously all Free League fans, so they can do no wrong, it seems. It does seem that way at the moment, yeah. So yes, Aliens RPG Colonial Marines expansion, extravaganza, uh, which is due in, I think, quarter two of this year? No, quarter one. End of March. Quarter one, it's, it's even due better. due in March. End of, <gasps> end of March, boys and girls. Right, we need That's to get, quarter two. We need to get a shift on with um, Forbidden Lands then. Yeah, we, <laughs> yeah, we, we do. We might have to take a hiatus um, in that, because as soon as that lands, we're playing. <laughs> we go, no, we don't. Steve and I'll just murder you in a fortnight. It's fine. <laughs> Mate, I'll, you think you're going here? No, you're dead. Sorry. I'll, I'll walk off the edge of a cliff if it means that I, I have to get get out of it and play pay aliens. But yes. then, to be fair, I am loving Forbidden Lands, so that's going to be a tough one. Mm. Yes, I think it's fair to say the teething troubles have been uh, worn off now. It's uh, we're, we're doing well. Well, we're not doing well. We're enjoying it. We're just not doing very well. <laughs> So, Mr. Tudor, what is your third game? Right. So the first one I picked hasn't come out yet, but will probably be something I could play with Amanda because it's got a puzzle. Northguard is something I can easily play with Amanda because she loves Northguard video game as well. So, so far, lockdown isn't affecting these games. However... Until now. My last game is Ankh, Gods of Egypt. Mm. which is a big multiplayer miniature dudes on a map extravaganza set in ancient Egypt with ridiculously over-detailed, probably unnecessary miniatures that will look awesome on the table but add very little gameplay. Ah, this is an Eric Lang Simon game, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It's <laughs> actually, I think, Eric Lang's final Simon game because he left Simon shortly I after this finished. Right, yes. this. This, is, this is the kind of the third in the very loose trilogy, isn't it? Yes. So this yes. is Blood Rage was the first, uh, Rising Sun was the second, and Ankh is the third. And mm. I've been a little bit... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Reluctant a little bit because Simon's quality has kind of, kind of gone a bit up and down in the actual quality of their games. But originally on this list was Bloodborne which I received just over Christmas, over the Christmas break. It quite literally received just before Brexit hit fully and I had to pay that on it, which was nice. Um, 
because that that and the uh, Infinity Box arrived on the same day, which means Jeez. I had like, three massive boxes turn up. Merry Christmas. And Bloodborne has been... I've only played it once or twice now, so I've only learnt the rules and done the basics, but it's a very good game. Ooh. And so I am looking forward to Ankh. And Ankh is... It's an area controly type of game where you're going to be taking over areas of the board, you're going to be using godly powers and using worshippers to do things. I must admit, I haven't looked too much in detail on the mechanics because I tend to wait until these things arrive before I look into them in detail. But the problem is it's going to be, it's like a three, four player game. And so I'm not going to be able to play this until lockdown's over. So I'm hoping actually this gets delayed until like September. So it just, just doesn't just sit on my shelf, you know, doing nothing while we're waiting for the vaccine to get rolled out. Yeah, yeah. Now I've not. I st- I'm still to play um, Rising Sun. Actually, I haven't played that yet. I think yeah, John has because you guys played at was Aircon, Aircon about... in 2019. I think Some is when you played that. Like that yeah. Yeah. So I've I've still not played it. Which, I mean, it does look impressive, but is it is it fair to say that those miniatures are entirely vestigial? No, no, they. Oh, they're not vestigial. They're just they don't need to be that big. Okay. So, like, there are big monsters, right? But there really isn't a need for them to be in like six inches tall miniatures. <laughs> right, got you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I see. Okay. Very nice. I see. I like Egyptology and all that kind of jazz, so I would be very interested to see this. Well, it's it's with their usual designer, which is Adam Smith, who's done all the creature design for Rising Sun mm. and and Blood um, Blood Rage as okay. well. So they're all kind of like quite almost horrific in their design, but not quite like Lovecraftian horror. <laughs> not quite Dawn of Madness. No. <laughs> which I just messed up. Mm. Excellent. So another come uh, on game there. Let's hope Ank isn't with a capital W. I don't know if it's a salute you or just kick you off the podcast for that. I, I'm in two minds here. <laughs> ah, it's the former. You <laughs> laughed. You've got to respect my genius. I've been wanting to say that for at least 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. There's a hippopotamus with a crocodile on its back. What? <laughs> I was looking through Ankh, uh, whatever it's called, Ankh Gods of Egypt, and in the Guardians, there's a, a Towerette, right? Which is a Kickstarter exclusive, which is a hippopotamus with massive titties and a skin oh, crocodile. God, <laughs> Oh, that's so wrong. That is, that's just bizarre. Shall we move on, boys? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gill, moving on. Uh, Dr. Lewis, hello. Right, yes. Um, My last choice is an RPG. But. You, sh- there's a you but. shock me. Hang there's on. a but. Is there a big stinky but? There's a but. It's a board game. Tabletop, proper one. RPG. Ooh. What is this new devilry you well, speak of? This is, this is one of my, my first introductions, I guess. A bit of cherry popping went on on this, I suppose, to some extent. Um, so, what is this? This is Agamonia. And oh. by Lauterpelle... Lauterpelle. Thank you very much. Yes, that one. Um, and it is going to be kickstarted. This quarter, I think, of 2021, with an expected release next year. What is it? Right, well, it's, uh, it's a board game. Um, it's kind of like an amuse-bouche RPG, I think, is what I've described it in the past. We have briefly talked about this before, I think, on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, so since then, we've, we've had a couple of goals. We've had... Um, uh, go of the first tutorial and of the second tutorial now and it's kind of a monsters magic fantasy kind of setting you've got um something happening in the world we haven't quite got into the story of this yet but um it's got all the classics it's got your rogue characters it's got your magic chucker of some description you bop it on the head fighter and your strong kind of what's his name like the thing out of not the thing. What's his name? The guy at Fantastic Four. Cl- Clobber in time. 
him. The thing. The thing. He's in it. The thing is a thing, yeah. It's yeah. a thing. It is, yeah. Um, from what we've played, but it's a cooperative board game. It's got a bunch of choices and it unfolds in quite an interesting way. So um, it's got um, kind of hot spots on the board, as it were, and as you play through the story, you can un- unravel some of the, you know, what's happening here and why are we doing this? And it throws a few um, challenges and puzzles your way, maybe a little baddie to hit as you go as you go through. Mm. Nice bit of fun, actually. I really quite enjoyed the couple of sessions we've had of it. So, yeah. So you've played Stuff Fables, haven't you, Andy? I have played Stuff now, Fables, how yes. similar was Agamemnon to Stuff Fables? Um, mechanically quite different, actually. Mm. In style, similar, in the sense that you are basically mooching around a map and finding things on it and going to a destination and something will happen. That's, that bit's very similar. But in Stuff Fables, it's a grid, so it's a, it's, a, it's a regimented grid, whereas in Agamonia, obviously, you've got different shapes. But ultimately, yes, you go through a number of shapes, and you can move, and you'll end up going onto an icon, and something will happen. And then when you read something in Stuff Fables, the story advances, much like in Agamonia. So from that point of view, they're similar. But the mechanics of the games are very, very different. So in Stuff Fables, you have a dice, almost like a dice pool that you get every turn that you roll, and you can choose where you want to assign your dice. Whereas in Agamonia, you get two actions, which you have to select before the round starts. And then, depending on what you end up doing, dictates what, what dice you roll, and then you get to choose whether you want to sort of enhance those dice with, 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 with additional things. So... They're broadly similar, but mm. they're mechanically different. Okay. Um, and the artwork's very different as well. Yeah, no, 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 stuff, yeah, no. It was, yeah. it was just, like, just like a kind of a very broad strokes what was what was similar. Because it's, it's that kind of game, isn't it? It's it is. going to be this kind of story-driven oh. scenario kind of, RP, as I said, RPG-style game. Yeah. But I, oh. I, I mean, we play Gloomhaven, but Gloomhaven seemed to be in a different league to, to Agamonia. It, it, this was super yes. accessible. It felt easy to get into. It, yeah, you know it. It held your hand through as you played it, um, and and I think the comments I made last time we played it is, are all still valid. And having played the combat now, since that time, I think it is very much a game that you can dip in and out of quite quickly. You can have a quick hours blast on it with the wife or whatever, and and it, it's nice and quick and easy to play. You mm. know, and and it unfolds quite quite nicely, quite quickly. I think. Mm. Yes, I enjoyed it. Um... The, the fact that you have a... It's not quite a branching story, but you can choose where the story goes by where you go on the map. Mm. Yeah. It's quite nice. Again, that's similar, but not the same as Stuff Fables. Um, because there's an extra level in Agamonia compared to Stuff Fables where you can flip over a story card and most of the time there'll be something that your party has to do to achieve that story beat you know, whether you need to gather a load of wood or chop down a tree and spend a bunch of actions doing that. In Stuff Fables, it's a bit more simple. It's literally just, this is the part of the story. It might dictate something else that happens, but that's pretty much as far as it goes most of the time. Mm. So there's a little bit more to it in, in Agamonia. There's a bit of history as well. So what you've done in the previous session or the previous part of the game does kind of carry over with you as well. So if you've been really good and... Sort of somehow manage to smash through lots of stuff, you'll get a bit of a Brucey bonus. You know, whereas if you've been a bit shite, you get there and you might have an <laughs> extra few baddies or you might not have as much resource as you may have done, things like that. So as I say, it's it's carrying over some of the concepts of an RPG and that kind of campaign flavor, the you know, developing your character and growing your character as well. Yeah. Um you know, so it's not yeah, it's not gonna give us it's not gonna give anybody that's looking for a proper RPG buzz that buzz. But it is a way in, and I think it's yeah. a nice way in. And it was fun. Fundamentally, yeah, yeah. it was good I fun. I agree. Mm. That's Agamonia, and that's going to Kickstarter? Uh, this year, I think. I think this quarter. This quarter? Oh, right. I, think that's, that's, I think it's pretty soon, yeah. Mm. Yes, I think we're, we're expecting the Kickstarter to start this definitely this quarter, yes, 2021. Mm. Um, speaking of Stuffed Fables and 2021, there is an expansion for it due out this year called Stuffed Fables O Brother. 
which I can only assume means it goes around um, because in, in Stuff Fables you you play as, well, there's a little girl in the big girl bed and that kind of all the story sort of rolls around her basically being asleep. So I can only assume that she has a little brother. I haven't read too much about it, but uh, it looks like it's quite quite fun. There's another book and similar mechanics there. And speaking of expansions, there is a expansion for Paladins of the West Kingdom out or at least the Kickstarter will be this year, uh, due in February, apparently. It's called City of Crowns, obviously from Garpel Games, so I doubt that'll be out before sort of the end of this year, but you never know, because it's only an expansion rather than a full game. It might be slightly quicker to turn around, but I don't know. So I'll have to keep an eye out for that, because we're big fans of Paladins, so mm. we're almost certainly going to be getting that. Yes. So we have had a big list of listener feedback about the games everyone else is excited for but before we go into that is there anything else you desperately want to mention either of you i, know I gave you kind of three slots each is there anything i know andy's list is still 20 odd games but is there anything you want to throw in there it's probably worth mentioning venice yes which we've all well you and i have played uh, Steve, um, which I think was it was due out in 2020, but obviously lots and lots of games have been delayed for various reasons, and hopefully that's on its way to us pretty soon, actually, I think. So that's the second in the series from Grain Crack Games, first being Ragusa. Venice is obviously based in Venice. David Turks, he's had his hand in, in the design of it, and we all loved it when we played it at Expo back in the mists of time. <laughs> and then, uh, obviously, online with, with Lewis as well. Really enjoyed that. So, yes, definitely looking forward to that. And also Oath, which is from Leader Games. So that's by uh, Cole Whirl, I think his surname is. Same guy who designed Root. So that's another uh, very pretty-looking game. Similar artwork, but it's a it's a legacy game that isn't a legacy game, as far as I can right. tell. So, so every game you play will affect the next game. But So it, it's more like a resettable campaign, I think, than anything else. Mm. But the players obviously decide how it all goes. And I, I get the impression from, from the blurb that the there are lots and lots and lots of different combinations. So it should be quite an in-depth, multifaceted game. And I, I really do like Root, so I'm, I'm looking forward to Oath quite, quite a lot. Some of the things that some of our listeners have told us they are looking forward to. Richard, who's not a wizard, is interested I, in I, I, I think he is. He's just a liar. We, we, we have established that, I mm. think. <laughs> so he's interested in Cora Quest, which is by Dan Hughes. He reckons that's his most anticipated game of the year. Uh, Jeff Cost. Actually, Jeff, Jeff sent me quite a big email because he'd missed the previous episode when he wanted to say what he played in 2020. So he sent me a big list of that and then a big list of what he was excited for. So he's mentioned a couple of things we have mentioned, like Oath Sworn. But he also mentions Terraform Mars the Dice Game, which he explains as Terraforming Mars in half the time. That can't be a bad thing. Terribly boring, <laughs> terribly <laughs> boring farce, yes. <laughs> Yeah, as you can tell, we're not a fan of that game. Anyway, Dude, weird, weirdly, Alora and I have been playing quite a lot of it recently. She really likes it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not terrible. I just don't think it's brilliant. It's, bit, it's yeah, that's yeah. what you mean. Yeah, it's, it's perfectly functional. It is. Yeah, it's all right, but I just don't <laughs> think it's worth all the the, the the hype it gets at all. And the artwork's crap. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's taken as red, isn't it? Yeah. So Az says he likes to do, the one thing he's looking forward to is actually being able to play games with other people. Amen, brother. But his um, the game he's looking forward to is the rumored Arkham Horror Atlantica, which is the one we Battle Star Atlantica, which is yeah the remake of Battle Star Galactica in the Arkham Horror uh, scenario. Ian Schofield says all he's seen since listening to the last podcast is mattress adverts on <laughs> Facebook feed. <laughs> <laughs> you are welcome, my friend. Craig Haggart is looking forward to Streets and the next Garpill Games in the South trilogy. So we were talking actually not that long ago about the the next trilogy from um, from Garpill, and it looks like he's presumably going round the compass. He's gone from the north to the west to the south. So presumably the next one after that is going to be the east. 
Unless as he sasses it up, I don't know. So I don't know anything about the South trilogy at all. So Craig, you are ahead of the game here. Although to be fair, compared to us, that's not difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Steve covered streets in a video review. So go and check that out if you want his, his brutally honest opinion about it. I remember it looking very pretty. Mm, it is very pretty, yes. Yes. Derek Neal, one of our um, RPG compatriots, is also looking forward to the June RPG. Shocking, I know, given that he was the DM for it. <laughs> and also the Successors board game. I believe Andy Lewis is also on board the Kickstarter. Hell yeah, he is. Um, so what Successors, wanna... Andy? Because I've not heard of this. Uh, yeah, I backed it. So remember Hannibal by Phalanx? Yeah. Yes, it's by Phalanx. So, you know... Heavily, heavily themed and strategic game that looks incredibly difficult to get into by by Phalanx. Yes, one of them. So yes, I have backed it. And I am actually, to be fair, I am actually quite looking forward to it. But the problem is it's one of those games that I will probably play about once every five years. Because A, it's going to be hard to convince anybody to play it. And B, once you get it all set up after four hours, you're even going to play six hours playing the bloody thing. So worth it. But difficult to get to the table. So he's looking forward to that. Estimated playtime, 300 minutes. That's, yeah, that's that's similar to Hannibal, really. Because, I mean, that's that's a hefty game as well. Because, I mean, Derek and I played Hannibal in our Worcester gaming session a few years ago now, shortly after I got it. And, I mean, that's a four-hour gaming session we have, so it's sort of 7 till 11. And we got about halfway through a game of Hannibal in that time. <laughs> and it's only a two-player Jeez. game. Sid, have you heard the story about when I played Hannibal with him? No, I don't think I have. So this is, as, as Andy said, it's a five to six hour game. It, it, it is, you've got to carve out a day for this. And that's if you know how to play it, it's a five or six hour game. You are quite literally replicating, you know, Hannibal attacking Rome and all that. I won in about a third of the time because Andy forgot to guard Rome. He took soldiers out of Rome to go, to go <laughs> attack some of my barbarians and so one of my barbarians just went do-do-do-do-do through the back door. That was it. Won the game. Yeah, the, my capital and political centre of my entire empire. Keys left in the door, wide open. Come on in, everyone. Party time. Oh, shit, I've lost. Oh, well, never mind. Just left a feast on the table ready for I Steve did, yeah, to yeah. Open bar. Open bar. Go for it. Nice. If it's any consolation, I played War of the Ring with Adam, which is another right big thing. It's basically like Lord of the Rings as a board game, the entire thing. You know, it's miniatures all over the place, big map of Mordor and Middle Earth and all that, and you're moving all these things around. And I didn't quite grasp what my victory conditions, or more importantly, what my enemy's victory conditions were. So I lost in like round two because <laughs> I'd left some sec like one quarter of Mordor undefended and basically just like the entire fellowship just gracefully wandered into Mordor, plucked the ring off and went home with time for tea. <laughs> <laughs> The way the films should have worked. If oh. well, if, if my version, if my version of Lord of the Rings had happened in a film, it would have been over in an hour and a half. He wouldn't even have to go to Rivendell. It would just be just straight there. They, they would have gotten the eagles and gone straight there, plopped it in the in the mountain, and gone home again. Oh no, they didn't need the eagles. They just basically got a taxi straight to it. Yeah, <laughs> dial up an Uber that way, mate. Off you go. There's four quid. <laughs> to be fair, they could have just given it to Hermes, and they would have lost the <laughs> forum. I would have True. No, no one would have ever bat. seen that ring again. You're giving it to Hermes. <laughs> <laughs> They'd have found it in a soggy box at the bottom of a wheelie bin 27 years <laughs> later. With a, sorry, we missed you card in your letterbox. That's it, yep. <laughs> Good grief. Back on track, Mark McKinnon <laughs> wants to see Monster Hunter World, which I assume is based on the video game. Yes. Yes, because there's Monster Hunter Try, Monster Hunter the World, and various other... JRPG aspects to it, isn't it? Uh, to see if it has S to see if SFG have ruined it, and to see how much it sucks compared to his new game. So nice and optimistic there, Mark. Well done. That makes me look happy. Good grief. And and as Chronom, Chronom. Uh, so many games I highly anticipated in 21, 2021, disregarding Kickstarter. So here we go, boys. He's done our job for us because everything we looked at was basically Kickstarter. Uh, for example, Cascadia, Endless Winter, Sleeping Gods, Merchants of the Dark Road, Tanabusi. Has anyone heard of these? I've heard of Sleeping Gods. I thought you've backed Endless Winter. I was you? going to say, yeah, that's a Kickstarter. I backed it. Yeah. You lie, <laughs> Anders. You lie. <laughs> <laughs> so Sleeping Gods, I think Sleeping Gods gets mentioned a couple of times on some other people's lists, mm. and it's a Ryan Lockett game. 
Now I am I've got to admit I've never played a single Ryan Lockett game. So I don't know anything about them really, but they come highly regarded. Mm. Okay. So it's another one of these like story, but I think Sleeping Gods is like a storybook game similar to Agamonia, but not a miniatures RPG kind of game. It's like exploring and such like it does. It's ve- they are really pretty because he does all the artwork. The one basic one guy designs the entire game and does all the artwork and does all the graphic design. Wow, and yeah. they look amazing. But I've, I've yet to try one. Okay, well we'll have to keep an eye out for that then. Uh, but his most anticipated game of 2021 and 2020 is easily Golem by Cranio Creations, which are the same people who did uh, Barrage, which we really quite liked. Well, I rather quite liked. Hef- hefty brain-breaking Euro, really enjoyed. Quite punishing, but ultimately very, very good. Uh, and also uh, Luciani, one of the co-designers of Tzolkin. So um, that's got a good track record. So that sounds like it could be worth a bit of a poke. So Adam, who I just mentioned in our Wuthering Saga game, uh, he wants to get Battle Can or some super <laughs> fancy brawl to the table. Uh, so Evangelos Foscolos, I think, uh, is Endless Winter, so that's another one in Andy's camp. Uh, Luke Hector is Waiting for Sleeping Gods, which I think we've already had mentioned. We've got Graham Hall, Guards of Atlantis 2. Interesting, because we've played Guards of Atlantis um, a few years ago now, which is a, um, not a tower defence game. MOBA. MOBA, that's the word I'm looking for. Thank you, Steve. And we were okay on it. Um, we found it was fine until we couldn't upgrade our characters anymore. Then it kind of got a bit stodgy. So I wonder if um, they've managed to iron out some of the kinks there. The miniatures mm, were very it, nice, though. It was a very beautiful game. It was on Kickstarter. Was it? I missed that. Yeah, I I completely missed that. Yeah, I I don't know. I, I it'd be interesting to see because we also had issues with color blindness as well, didn't we? There was massively. Yes, yes. I mean, it, even me not being color blind couldn't see one of the icons, and I think you couldn't see it at all. It just blended into nothing. I must. They must have used the female color palette, which includes salmon, <laughs> fuchsia, peach, apple mist, <laughs> peach, yes. sunny morning. <laughs> No, the, the, the problem was there was an icon on the card which was like red and black. Oh god! And it was it was like even I was like you know, squinting at it, and Andy was like, "There's, there's no icon there." There is Andy. It's just it's a bit difficult to see, and I was like, "No, no, it's not there at all. I cannot see this." It's completely <laughs> invisible to my dog eyes. And I actually asked the guy who was demoing it. I don't know if he was one of the designers or public publishers. Anyway, some poor guy that was basically de- demoing it to us. And I said, "Has this been colorblind tested?" He says, "No." And I went, "What?" In this day and age? <laughs> no, we didn't call a blind test it. Okay, then. Brian McInnes. So he's basically... He wants a bit of John's dulcet tones brought back as well. Wow. Brian, what is wrong with you? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> John is busy with babies. Indeed. He's wiping up nappies and poo and stuff like that. Nice. But, um... Jessica mentions Eternal Palace from Alley Cat Games. Now, we played that, and we rather liked it. We did indeed. I'd completely forgotten about it. <laughs> I thought you had. That's terrible. <laughs> yes. Because I, I don't know if I don't know if it was Kickstarter or not. If it has been, I've completely missed it. I don't think it's been Kickstarter yet. No, that's all right, because I know... I hope, I hope not, because I can... <laughs> no, no, exactly. Because I know um, Alley Cat are about to bring out... If they haven't already, actually, I think it's just start. Actually, yeah, it's been out about a week now as, as we record this. Is Tinner's Trail, which is a remake of a Martin Wallace game. Um, hmm. And that's on Kickstarter at the moment from Alley Cat. So I assume Eternal Palace is still undergoing final tweaks before its Kickstarter campaign, presumably, fingers crossed, later this year. Hmm. Hope so, yeah. Hmm. So, the Dave, formerly known as Spikey. We know him. We know him. Um, <laughs> says uh, it's between Return of the Dark Tower, which he says I succumbed to. I can imagine that was not cheap. Oath or Dinosaur World. Dinosaur World being a sequel to um, Dinosaur Island. Jurassic Park. Well, it's kind of Jurassic Park, but of like a Jurassic Park the Dice Game kind of, isn't it? Yes. A bit. Yeah. A bit. David S. Livens says he's excited for Brian Lockett's follow up to Near and Far. I also want to get hold of Ginkopolis. 
And Chris Bolton basically says any game that he can actually play with his friends around a real, t- real table with beer and friends. I don't care if it's snakes or ladders. <laughs> <by that point. laughs> yeah, I think we're all on board with that plan. Although he says in reality it's the oaf is what he's really looking forward to. Yes. And then finally, Scott Ghostly Tuner Mellers <laughs> says Crash Octopus. And I had to look up Crash Octopus because I'd never heard of this before. And it's a flicking game. Oh. With little wooden pieces where you have an ocean with an octopus and it's all its tentacles are coming out of the ocean and you have to flick things across to try and get other things to happen. It looked really silly and really cute. Interesting. That'll be probably one of those games that is far far more fun than it should be. Yes. Like um, A Kid in the Shuffle that we played. That's a game for kids, but you play it as adults and you d- you discover that you hate all your friends. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. It's brilliant. <laughs> so, there we go. That's a long list. That's a lot of games coming out this year. Well, it's because it's all happened this year. It's like every, it's going to be like weddings, isn't it? Everyone's had their weddings cancelled. They've had no games come out. Mm. So everyone's going to make up for it this year. I've got about three or four 40th birthday parties to go to as well. Because Alora had her 40th in 2020. Nothing happened for that. A bunch of her friends had it. So we've got a bunch of those to go to. So there's loads of stuff to catch up on this year. It's insane. I'm going to spend the mm. second half of 2021 absolutely smashed. I mean, that's just. I was was going to say, (laughs) (laughs) that's how you spent 2020 as well. It really is, actually. Yes, I've had to curb that. (laughs) Anyway, thank you very much for listening. We have been Polyhedron Collider. We will be back soon with a normal-ish episode, uh, providing we can find something to actually play between now and then. In the meantime. You can chat to us. Oh, oh, sorry. If you enjoy this podcast, please give us a review on your favourite podcast platform of choice. Uh, if you want to chat to us, we are on Twitter, collectively at Polyhedron C, and I'm at Wahotha Madenga. I am at Sonic H with zero. And John is still alive. If you want to talk to him, he is at John underscore Cage on Twitter. Sid has a Twitter account, but is reluctant to share it for reasons best known to yeah, himself. He's... Put mine in the post. <laughs> we are also... <laughs> write, write me a letter. I'm going to bring back letters in 2021. <laughs> you should do. I mean, I've got fountain pens and everything for the writing thereof. We could do it. I just need a high back Windsor, uh, Winchester chair now, so that, that'll work. We are also on Facebook and uh, the Board Game Geek Guild number 2726. Um, there is a website, polyhedroncollider.com, although it is languishing in the fires of 2019. I think that was pretty much the last time Steve and I put anything on it, but there is some good stuff there. Go and read it. Mm. Well, in the meantime, we have been Polyhedron Collider. Thank you very much for listening. Happy gaming and good night. Enjoy 2021. Cheerio all. Well.